Welcome. This is the first toxic PFAS situation report titled PFAS in the Drinking Water at Wordsmith Air Force Base, 1982 to 1997. This is episode number one. I'm your host, Craig Miner, reporting to you from Cedarville, Ohio. This report will be just me speaking, but future reports will be in interview format with key subject matter experts that you need to hear from. The purpose of this channel is to educate the public about perfluoral alkyl substances, one video at a time. The general term perfluoral alkyl substance is a class of over 4,000 plus molecules and is abbreviated PFAS and pronounced PFAS. This poison continues to destroy communities and the environment worldwide. This report will show you the facts about one DOD military base where PFAS from firefighter foam was routinely drawn into the water tower and distributed to faucets base wide. This poison was consumed in egregious amounts by veterans and civilians, their spouses, their children, and their unborn, all while working and living on base. Future reports will cover more PFAS poisoning news and real-life stories of those harmed all across the U.S. and abroad. I will line up subject matter expert interviews from industry, education, health care, and government to keep you informed on all things PFAS. We need to work together to join with elected and appointed officials to engage this tragedy. To do this, you need to know what is going on. Keep watching and be sure to like and share this video. Especially share this video with anyone who lived and worked at Wurtsmith Air Force Base from 1970 to 1997. Also, please subscribe to this channel to stay up to date and learn how you can make a difference. The Wurtsmith Air Force Base story involved my family. I was stationed at Wurtsmith from 1986 to 1990. More on me and my family later. Let's begin. As you can see, Wurtsmith Air Force Base Oscoda is located in Michigan, which is right next to the Great Lake Huron. Second, look at the PFAS path to people on the left there. As you look over the timeline, you see firefighter foam arriving at Wurtsmith in 1970. By the way, the firefighter foam was called aqueous film forming foam on the label. Aqueous film forming foam is abbreviated AFFF and is a pronounced AFFF. This 3M product was ultimately dumped on the ground near the main water wells. 3M called the AFFF light water. Roughly 23 years after Wurtsmith closed its military operations at Wurtsmith, PFAS was found and measured in the groundwater around the old wells. In addition, 24 old fire hydrants, an old hot water heater, and an old water softener was found to contain large amounts of PFAS. After seeing this report, me and another veteran tested our blood for PFAS in 2019, and our PFAS levels were 17 to 20 percent above the national average for the exact type of PFAS unique to the legacy firefighter foam everyone at Wordsmith was exposed to. Now, Let's look at some historical Air Force documents to show why this happened. I included this slide to quickly show you the first page from a Qualified Products List, or QPL, for all AFFF firefighter foam products that were available to requisition by the Air Force. The first entry on this list is dated May 15, 1970. This is likely when Wurtsmith began using firefighter foams with PFAS. A side note, the Navy began using similar AFFF formulas in the mid-1960s, and it was the Navy and 3M working together that created the first Department of Defense firefighter foam with PFAS. So the question is, how did the firefighter foam find its way into the main water source for the entire base? The answer to this question is found in a 1993 Air Force Environmental Impact Statement. In a chart on page 3-50, it states that there was a uh, disposal site labeled SS-60. And it was there that aqueous film forming foam was released off the operational apron. This location uh, was across from the fire station. This site description states foam was released as routine disposal. This practice ended in 1992 after MDNR which is Michigan Department of Natural Resources, informed the base that butyl carbitol, a component of the foam, is a pollutant. In the same 1993 Air Force Environmental Impact Statement report, a map showed where the AFFF was dumped. 
The picture on the left on page 3-45 depicts the base and its aircraft runway. The picture on the right is a blown up section, which clearly shows where the disposal site SS-60 was located. More about this location later. We know from the 1993 document that they stopped dumping AFFF at this site in 1992. By the way, this report you are viewing was published by the Air Force the same year the base ended its military operations. Before DOD could transition the land to the community, it needed to disclose all the environmental issues. So, the question is, when did they start dumping the AFFF at Site SS-60? The answer is in a 2001 Wurzmuth Air Force Base Public Health Assessment Report. This Air Force document states, quote, For about 10 years, Wurzmuth Air Force Base routinely emptied AFFF water mixtures off the edge of the base operations apron. This practice was stopped in 1992 when Wurzmuth Air Force Base learned that AFFF contains a harmful substance. Bottom line, they dumped leftover foam used to spray on fires at the training fire pit for roughly 10 years from 1982 to 1992. Here is where the facts get disturbing. This page is taken from a 2017 Michigan Department of Environmental Quality report. By the way, the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, abbreviated DEQ, is now called the Michigan Department of Environmental Great Lakes and Energy, which is abbreviated EGLE and pronounced EGLE. This chart made famous by Bob Delaney, who was an environmental specialist at MDEQ, revealed the concentrations of the PFAS plumes left over from the firefighter foam that are still in the Wurzmuth Aquifer today and shows where the historical main water wells were located in relation to the plumes. Let's take a closer look at these wells. Wow! You can immediately see the problem with the location of the disposal site SS-60. The firefighter foam dump site was roughly 500 yards upstream in the aquifer from these wells. Bob Delaney and his team, measuring the PFAS in the groundwater below the dump site, found over 40,000 parts per trillion of PFAS. Groundwater around the wells came in at roughly 20,000 parts per trillion. As if this was not enough, Bob found large amounts of PFAS in 24 fire hydrants, a hot water heater, and a water softener that were abandoned at the time the base was operational. This PFAS was drawn into the wells and distributed base-wide via the water tower. PFAS is odorless, tasteless, and colorless. Plus, over 95% of the PFAS you drink will go into your bloodstream. Once in your blood, these PFAS molecules take 3 to 5 plus years for the kidneys to remove. Think about it. If you were living and or working on base, every cup of water you drank contained roughly 30,000 parts per trillion of PFAS. It would take 3 to 5 years for half of what you drank in that one cup to leave your body. If you were at Wurzmuth between 1982 and 1997, how many cups of water did you drink a day? Just how bad is this amount of PFAS? Well, according to a recent EPA report, not so good. The EPA in 2022 established a drinking water health advisory limit for certain PFASs at 0.02 parts per trillion. By the way, the same PFAS is found in the legacy firefighter foam. So today, every time you drink a cup of water, you're advised, for health reasons, not to have any more than 0.02 parts per trillion of PFAS in your cup. Compare this with roughly the 30,000 parts per trillion of PFASs that veterans and local civilians and their spouses, friends, visitors, children, and children in their womb were consuming on base at Wordsmith. What makes these PFASs insidiously harmful is how quickly they enter the blood as compared with how long they take to leave. This is called bioaccumulation. As the PFAS poison builds up in your system, your health outcomes become worse. Drinking PFAS-laden water is the fastest way to absorb this poison. PFASs will also be absorbed by your skin or inhaled in steam. How many long hot showers were taken at Wordsmith? Also, how many firefighters were exposed during training? Depicted here is the PFAS called PFHXS that was in my blood in 2019, some 29 years after I left Wordsmith. 
I plotted my blood serum, extrapolating backwards, and compared it to the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry's record of PFASs in the blood serum of the average U.S. citizen since 1999. You should know that PFH excess is a signature PFAS of the legacy firefighter foam used at Wurtsmith. PFHXS has a half-life in the blood of 5.3 years. Knowing this half-life, I was able to calculate how much PFAS I likely had in my blood when I left Wurtsmith. The answer was about 5 million parts per trillion. Another veteran, James Bussey, who lived and worked on base during the time they dumped the firefighter foam next to the water wells, had higher amounts of PFHXS. Here's what this poison did to my family. Our son Mitchell was born in 1989 on Wurtsmith Air Force Base, profoundly handicapped. Our book chronicles our lives with Mitchell. More about our book later. Mitchell was equivalent to a six-month-old, both physically and mentally. He was a quadriplegic with massive seizure disorders, tube fed, and a hospital bed in our home, and much, much more. He wasn't supposed to live past five and made it to 30 years old. He passed just three years ago at the onset of COVID. Our family loved Mitchell as profoundly as his handicaps. In 1991, Carrie had a miscarriage. The toxicity of PFAS in her blood was likely still too high. We had our youngest son, Levi, in 1992. Although he was born after we left Wurtsmith in 1990, recent studies show that likely 40% of the PFASs in Carrie were passed along to Levi. This is the sad thing about being poisoned by big industry and big government. When your head is down and you are doing all that you can do to carve out a life and just survive, you have no bandwidth to fight back. Again, read our book to understand. All the power and the money to prove this tragedy is in the hands of the poisoner. PFAS has been destroying lives for nearly 80 years. In the case of Wordsmith Air Force Base, I stand up and declare it is time for DOD to do the right thing. No more waiting for other agencies before you clear the Cold War battlefield. You might be asking why for 10 years did they dump the AFFF water mixture so close to the main water wells. I don't have a good answer because the manufacturer of the fighter fighter foam, 3M, in their product environmental data sheet states, disposal of firefighting waste. If possible, 3M recommends handling waste resulting from the actual or simulated firefighting activities by pre-treating in an oil water separator followed by bleeding to a wastewater treatment system. Serious foaming can be prevented by adjusting the discharge rate. Under the header, uh, disposal of the product, it also states, bleed to a wastewater treatment system in accordance with local regulations. Adjusting discharge rates, as described in the section above, should reduce serious foaming problems in the receiving treatment system. What is telling is Wurtsmith in 1982 added an oil water separator to the fire pit that was hooked to the wastewater treatment plant nearby. So, Wurtsmith was in compliance of 3M's published uh, disposal method as outlined in its 1982 product environmental sheet. I suspect that the discharge from the wastewater treatment plant was foaming so bad after they started sending the firefighting waste to the treatment plant that they decided to dump leftover AFFF water on the ground near the fire station so as not to put any more pressure on the treatment plant. Dumping extra AFFF on the ground was not an approved method to get rid of leftover firefighting. I say this again. Dumping extra AFFF on the ground was not the approved method to get rid of leftover firefighter foam. Today, the Air Force is working with local OSCOTA groups to contain and clean up the PFAS left behind. This is a recent map of the PFAS plumes as measured by the Air Force. The fight to contain and clean up this mess has been hard fought. In contrast, however, the recognizing of the poisoning of past veterans and civilians has been met with mostly silence. This may be about to change. Three months ago this past June, the 118th Congress sent the bill H.R. 4249 to the Committee on Veterans Affairs. This bill intends to allow furnishing hospital care and medical services to veterans and dependents who were stationed at military installations at which the veterans and dependents were exposed to perfluoroctanoic acid, PFOA, 
or other per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, PFAS, to provide for a presumption of service connection for certain veterans who are stationed at military installations at which the veterans were exposed to such substances and for other purposes. I will work to get subject matter experts to explain this further. Well, we are at the end of this first toxic PFAS situational report. Stay tuned as I line up interviews to keep you informed on all things PFAS. Please go to mitchellsmemoir.com for more on our story, Coping with PFAS Poisoning. My family's book, titled Overwhelmed, A Civilian Casualty of Cold War Poison, is available on Amazon in paperback, audiobook, and Kindle. Read our book to help fund this endeavor. Links to find our story are on our website, mitchellsmemoir.com. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe as well as share this video with all military folks and their families, as well as everyone you know who have been poisoned by PFAS. If you have a story that needs to see the light of day, please email me at toxicpfast at gmail.com. I close with a couple of parting thoughts. First is my message to... Uh, every veteran from a fellow veteran. We have many of our brothers and sisters left wounded on the Cold War battlefield. We have a calling, a duty, to leave no person behind. Help me carry our PFAS wounded off the battlefield to get the medical help they need. Finally, as we seek to clean up our lakes, rivers, and creeks, never forget this. The most important waterway on this planet is our bloodstream. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.